Hey beautiful people, your boy Gakiswa M and today let's talk about this very old monitor. This is the Atmos Ninja 2. Um, it, was many, it was manufactured or it was introduced way back in 2012. Um, is it relevant in 2023? Uh, we almost finished in 2023. Will it be relevant in 2024? Will it be relevant after that? So let's look at it. Um, I'm actually using it right now. That's why I don't physically have it here because I want you to be the judge in terms of how does the picture quality look. So I am using ProRes uh, right now. So I will be editing directly from it and then you'll be the judge. So this entire video from start to finish will be via uh, the, 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 the Ninja 2. So the Ninja 2, um, as I have said, it's a recording monitor, uses your camera, a sensor uses your camera lens to be able to um, record on it internally. So you can record both in ProRes, you can also use the Avid uh, DN, uh, so you have um, your three options of your ProRes, which is your Lite, your ProRes 42, um, and then your HQ. And also on the DN, um, you have your three options up to 220 um, megabits per second. So right now I'm using the ProRes. So um, the Ninja 2, the construction, um, it does have uh, your in and out, so that means you can loop your HDMI, it can go in to record, and you can also loop it to something else um, to be able to display. So another display uh, on the side, and then you also have your uh, headset, where you can put your headset, and it also looks like um, you can put a line out uh, in terms of a sound. So if you look at the back, um, it actually uses... Um, NPF style batteries, you can use uh, your adapter. There are adapters that you can plug on the AC, use them on this. Um, and the nice thing is that uh, the NPF style batteries are hot swappable, meaning uh, you can actually look on the screen and be able to tell which one is active. Then you can use uh, take the one that is not active out. Uh, let's say it's finished. You can take it out while it's still recording. You don't have to stop and then put a new battery. Um, so that is also a nice thing. Um, on the other side, it does have a one button, and that's the only button you will actually find on this monitor. Uh, this button uh, does a couple of things. It's on, off, and it also uh, locks that you don't uh, touch it by mistake and change the settings. So the screen um, is 800 by, I think, by 400, 450, um, around that. I think it's 800 by 400. Uh, so it is not like a high resolution um, 1080p screens that you usually get, uh, but it's quite bigger than um, a lot of your uh, camera so it will help with monitoring especially when it comes to focus um, the bigger the screen the better even though it's not like a detailed type of screen um, it's a touch screen but it's a um, captative type which means it actually uses pressure so it's not like our new smartphones kind of touch <laughs> or the new cameras so it's more it's, it's captative you have to use a little bit of pressure um, to be able to select your desired functions or menus so um what it does it does um your monitoring it does your recording and the nice part is that um you still get your uh, exposure tools like your professional exposure tools uh, that you can use even um uh, even your uh, what do you call it uh your focus so it does have focus picking uh which you can use um in terms of the exposure tool, it uses false color, and that is professional, in fact. It's quite nice. You hardly find it um, on your DSLR mirrorless cameras. The nice thing is that I'm actually using um, a more recent camera uh, and recording onto this monitor, and it is working very well. It's using an H HDMI, so you will be able to use it on uh, most of the cameras. I'm just not sure if you can use it on all of the cameras, but uh, in theory it should be able to work with all the cameras that have uh, hdmi out that can allow you to be able to record onto the monitor so the highest it can do is hd 1080p um uh, 30 so you can't go into a slow motion like your 50 so right now i'm using 1080p uh but 25 so um so that means you can't do your 4k uh, as long as your HDMI can uh, is enabled to be able to send a 1080p signal, you should be fine. Um, I don't think it should be a problem. If you don't have a budget um, and you come across this monitor, 
and you really need a monitor and when would you really need uh, a monitor like this if you have a camera that is actually saving or that is actually recording onto a single slot um, that is actually a problem you can easily lose clients work just like that um, the card can be corrupted easily so if you have this monitor you can record on both your camera and also onto this monitor as a backup so you do have a backup so also if you have an older pc um, that is struggling in terms of decoding um, your h.265 because h.265 is highly compressed it, it is detailed um, it's a lovely yeah, you can get a lovely picture from that codec but it's highly compressed so if you use this you will be able to record um, into a more professional uh, edit ready codec like your ProRes um, or your DN, your Avid um, DN. So when you get onto your PC, when your PC is a bit older, you don't have to, um, it, the PC doesn't have to struggle, use a lot of CPU to decode uh, because your ProRes is uh, more of a lossless um, type of um, codec it doesn't really compress uh, much so it's easy on your pc so um i think um those three are the main things um you need a backup which for me that's number one um you have an edit ready codec and then um the budget because if you have a bigger budget you might as well go on to the newer monitors because they have a lot more to give um compared to the ninja 2 but Ninja 2 have you covered in terms of the basics. And um, the other one, which I think it's more like a bonus, is not really a very important one. It, because of the larger screen than your normal cameras, your DSLR, your mirrorless, um, you are able to judge focus better. And also, um, it is able to, it is able, to, you are able to use a picking on it to be able to, um, judge in terms of picking um, it also does have like your zebra uh, but that most of the DSLRs mirrorless um, some of them in fact they do have but the more recent ones mostly of the most of them um, they do have that so from me uh, be the judge with what I've said and also uh, look at this the picture the, this entire that I've been doing this entire video. So this is your boy Kaki. So M, I just wanted to say, is this Ninja 2 worth it in 2023, 2024, 2025 and beyond? Your boy Kaki. So M, I am out of here.